Fam, what's good? Welcome back to the Mic Check Podcast. This is T-Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for tapping in. Today, we're talking about Roly Romero and his return to the ring. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate the support and feedback. And while you're at it, if you're feeling generous, donate via Cash App, dollar sign T-H-A-M-I-C-C-H-E-C-K-1-2. That's the Mic Check 1-2 to support this channel so we can continue to put out really good content and improve the quality as well. All right, that being said, I'm not going to delay because in the last video that I put out, uh, one of our followers, K Malir 504 my sis from the South, said that the video was just too damn long. So we're getting right into it. So we're not doing the technical breakdown of Romero versus Barossa simply because this is a replacement opponent. I believe he's 40 years old, and I'm expecting that he's been brought in to get beat up by Roly, even though this gentleman does have a lot of knockouts uh, i think in 24 fights he's got like 20 ko's or something ridiculous like that um Roley's a power puncher um i just think that he's gonna be more fast uh better feet uh because he is like a really high level athlete even if he's not a really good boxer and i think with an older fighter the longer the fight goes the more it favors Roley. and i can see him stopping this guy around six or seven don't quote me on that don't bet on that but I do have a stoppage in this fight. Roley could get his ass knocked out because we ain't seen him in the ring since Tank Davis knocked him out, the lightweight lightning bolt, just about a year ago. So we'll see how it goes. But the reason for this video is just to talk about not only the 140-pound card coming up this weekend because you got Gary Antoine Russell is going to be on there. You've got Kenneth Sims Jr. Um, this is going to be a pretty solid 140-pound card. And I think that it's going to be a good entertaining card. Now, is this going to be the best fight card you're going to see in 2023 up to this point? Hell no. But I think for boxing diehards, I think you're going to find entertainment value. In four fights, you're going to have at least two good ones. For free TV or basic subscription TV, I think that's good enough. Now, what I also want to address is what does this mean for Rolando Romero, a.k.a. Roley? So... He was like a, a top contender. He had some type of WBA silver or gold belt or something crazy like that when he fought Tank. And he basically got knocked down the rung at 135 pounds. So in this fight, he moves up to 140. The question mark is, what did he do to deserve a title shot, which he was originally supposed to fight Alberto Pueyo on May 13th, but instead he's gonna be fighting this Barossa guy. Um, Getting knocked out by Tank just raised his profile. And what we figured out over the last few years is that these sanctioning bodies want their belts in the hands of people who sell tickets because the bigger the purse is, the more money they make, right? So that's why Roley's getting the title shot. Now, because Poyo um, popped dirty uh, for PEDs, he's been pulled from the fight and he's basically appealing the uh, test results that said that he popped dirty. So instead of getting a shot at a vacant title, and Poyo getting stripped, he's still the title holder and Roley's going to get an interim fight. So essentially, he gets an opportunity to get a tune-up at 140. And then once Poyo gets this solved, if he can prove that he's clean, Roley's going to get probably another shot at this fight if he wins. Um, but if Roley loses, then, you know, it'll be somebody else, maybe Gary Anton Russell. Or if Poyo is to be found to have dirty samples, the A and the B, then Roley will become the champion if he's to win this fight. So even though it seems like it's not an important match, this could impact who's going to be the WBA champion at 140 pounds. And as it stands, those belts are broken up. So, you know, you're looking at who Regis is going to face in the future. He just signed with Queensbury. I'm mean, excuse me, with match room. So there's a lot going on with that. We'll talk about in another video. All of that to say, this fight is a little bit important for the landscape at 140 because if somebody like Devin Haney is going to move up, what does it mean? A lot of people don't give Tank Davis credit because he won a regular belt at 140. So if Roley's in there, now you've got an opportunity to set up a rematch because guess who's the WBA regular champion at 135? Javante Davis. So you put a belt in Roley's hands, you've got a regular belt in Tank's hands. He wants to validate his time at 140 or his match at 140. Go in there against somebody you beat. So if you're paying attention to the storyline, this is lining up for Roley to be the fall guy again and give Tank an opportunity to win a belt at another division, a legitimate title 
And it's going to be hard to question it because he'll have won it in the ring if he's able to line up with Pete Rowley again. So we'd love to get you guys' thoughts. I'm going to wrap it there. This has been T for the Mike Check Podcast. Until the next time, I'm out. Peace.